work on that as well. Also, um, we're doing a lot of bhakti stuff and, and seva, adjusting. Um, I'm giving you a lot of information, the tools of your trade. But I could give you a lot of tools and no impetus to how to use that, why to use that, what's your motivation to use that. Because I'm sure we've all walked into a classroom, done a class, and walked out and thought, well, the teacher said the right things, it was okay, I moved my body, everything worked, nothing was wrong, but I'm not really interested in coming back, you know? Or we can walk into a classroom, the teacher might not even do that much as far as asana is concerned or whatever, but we walk out of the room going, I'm so inspired now to get back to my practice, to get back into my, you know, myself, my own awareness. And what's the difference, you know? It's like we don't, sometimes we end up, especially when we finish our level one teacher training, we've got like our, you know, our little toolkit of, you know, this is alignment as we then knew it. This is, you know, how I teach a, a sequence. This is how I teach a bit of breathing. Uh, this is how I communicate all of that stuff. And then we go away and we really work on fine tuning those details. And we forget it's, it becomes empty and hollow until we understand what's my motivation for doing that? Where do I come from doing that? And um, so I always ask myself, what does it really mean to be a teacher? Why do we really teach? And this can go for anything, actually. Because I think once you are a teacher, you are a teacher for the rest of your life, no matter what it is. Because when you understand what it feels like, and, and the energy, the energetic connection you get with individuals because you watch somebody slightly transform through a word, a, a guidance, a bit of music or something like that, you know? Then if somebody just asks you directions walking down the street, you're like, okay, I want to help this person out because this is going to help them get to the next place, which is no different than in the asana practice. I, I feel like I'm teaching all the time, you know? It's important. In your notebooks, just for a moment here, I want you just to write down in your notebook, what do you think is your most important thing? There's millions of things, but for you, in this moment, if somebody said, what's the most important thing about teaching? Just write a sentence. Just a few, let's just write a few on the board. I'm patient, patient, focusing on the individual. One thing. Compassion. I want to put compassion. Okay. Compassion. Okay? Is that the same as love? Maybe it is, maybe it isn't. We can put love as well. Yeah? Love. Passion. Passion. Energy. 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 Inspire. To inspire. Transformation. Present. To transform. Fun. Change. Fun. To be clear. Hmm? To be clear. To be clear. Share. I don't know what to do, da 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 da, you know? 
And, and yet, if these are all our motivations, then we have to walk into class with that first. Okay? And this is the difference between being in a level one teacher training and being in a level two teacher training. Because in a level one teacher training, we probably all say things like um, safety and alignment. Um, you know, uh, really basic things. Because that's what we're being taught. But as you know, many of you know, you've been teaching for a few years, some of you many years, right? And after a while, you know, there is so much more. There's so much more to come out of here to share within all of this safety and alignment, et cetera, et cetera. And that comes from here. It comes from a place that's much bigger than the information. And we have to remember that. Because we can all know how the shoulder blade attaches to the upper part of the rib cage. But that doesn't, that doesn't mean we are going to help anybody transform or inspire anybody or you know, ignite passion in the room. Have compassion. Awaken curiosity. My favorite thing to say is the practice is not in the asana. It's in the awareness, right? So we have to find that for ourselves. The biggest problem with, um, with modern yoga is that it's, it's in, really it's in danger in the Western world of becoming a bodily obsessed exercise regime. Okay? And this is a huge problem. And I, and I don't have any problem with people spending years in a Bikram class or going to a yoga class because they like the way it makes them look. Right? But I feel that that is just a doorway into real yoga. Right? So it's okay that there's people out there teaching pure exercise. It's fine. We don't mind that. It makes us look better. Right? <laughs> So what we have to do is make sure we don't fall into that trap. And what happens is quite often we think, oh God, everybody goes to that hot yoga, you know, buns of steel, you know, hip opening class or whatever it is, the flavor that week, and that, you know, I, I need to be teaching that. And this, as we're gonna go through today, it's that's not where it comes from. You have to you have to let that go out the window completely. As I've written here, we need to have the courage to step away from what we think the public wants and stand firm in our integrity, right? I'm very fond of saying in my teacher trainings, I'm not here to make friends. I may end up being best friends with every single one of you, but that's not my job. My job is to make you a better teacher, is to inspire excellence in you. If you like me as a person, great. If you don't like me as a person, that's okay. I'm still going to teach you just the same. If you never come back to my class, that's fine. You'll find another teacher somewhere else that might click something with you, right? And that's how we have to walk into the classroom every time we do. And I think one of the biggest problems we have is we want people to like us. We want people to come back. And that motivates us instead of these things that we already decided were the most important thing, right? For me, my biggest, my biggest motivation for doing everything I do is to inspire other people. I think that's such a powerful tool. I, I, I don't want to really be responsible for your transformation because we all know transformations can be messy. So. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's wonderful and I watch it happen all the time, but that's not my motivation for being in the room. Mine is I have so much passion for what I do and what I understand that I want to inspire each and every one of you to find that in, your, in yourself, to spark that light within yourself that not only makes you a better teacher, but means everyone that you come in contact with, whether they're your student or your next door neighbor, you also just inspire as well by your mere presence. Just by your mere presence. We all know it's like. Remember what um, Emil was talking about with the energy. He was talking about the samskaras, right? The vasana, vasanas. They go, light goes towards light, right? You walk into a room and you are full of light, right? And people start to go, oh, my little 
light starts to shine too. They might not even know why. You know, she's like, oh, I just really like hanging out with you because you make me feel better. You know, and you've done nothing but just be you. We have to remember that. It's a very, very powerful tool that we have. And it's just in there, inside, waiting to come out. 